Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video I'm going to go over this uh, 8 position turret on this Denford ORAC lathe. Um, I've been retrofitting these lathes for a couple of months now. Uh, it was a pretty extensive retrofit. Um, but part, as part of that was to get this uh, original turret working. Um, this particular turret has a small motor going through a planetary gear set. Um, the motor is 24 volts DC and it's unidirectional. In other words, it rotates in one direction only. It can't uh, re reverse rotate. The um, reason being is there's a spring-loaded pawl in there so the turret, the turret um, rolls, rolls forward, rolls in this direction to change tools and then once the, the tool is identified by the centroid control there's a small uh, timer that lets it overshoot the pawl and then it'll go back uh, to lock against the pawl. Um, in order to do that, the turret is rotating forward at 24 volts, but it rotates in reverse at 12 volts, and the 12 volts is always applied to this little motor, which isn't a problem. It was designed that way, and it holds the, the turret in position. It uses uh, it has feedback. It's used, it uses what's called gray logic. It's basically a truth table of ones and zeros. This particular turret uses a three bit gray logic. Um, so, and uh, there's, there's information out on the web on this particular turret and its truth table. I happen to have a good friend of mine that provided me the truth table. Uh, let me see if I can show you this, this sheet here. Kind of gives you an idea what the truth table looks like. Um, this is the information sheet for the Acorn Gray Code with one motor output based tool turret. It will use the state of up to four bits to determine the current tool position of the turret. So uh, again, I have the uh, I have the, the the truth table for this particular turret. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to take you to the control cabinet and I'm going to show you the control components that I devised to set this up. Now currently with Centroid version 4.18 you set your lathe up, you get your turns ratios, everything all configured without the turret. Once the lathe is running, um, you got it configured without the turret, then uh, you go to Centroid's DIY website and there is a, uh, I'll put a link down in the uh, description where to download the current uh, turret package. Uh, I'm trying to help Centroid get through some other turrets. The next one will be an Emco Turn 120 turret, uh, which is very similar to this one, but it uses the 4-bit uh, logic, I believe. Um, and it is also unidirectional. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to take you over to the control cabinet, and I'll point out what I used uh, to uh, set this up. And again, um, when you, one of the things before you install the PLC for the turret, you have to make sure your lathe is completely set up, turns ratio, uh, you have to use the inputs and outputs that are specified in the documentation for setting up this particular one because the PLC is going to change for this particular application. In this case, the inputs are dedicated. Uh, inputs one, two, three, and four are tool turret position bit one, bit 2, bit 3, and bit 4. Uh, input 5 is drive OK. Input 6 is home all. Input 7 is spindle OK. And input 8 is e-stop OK. So that's the way you have to wire your machine. Those inputs have to be followed. The outputs are 1, no fault out. Number 2, rotate tool turret. Number 3, output 3, it's not used at this time. Number four is spin forward. Number five is spin reverse. Output six is drive reset out. Number seven is flood. And number eight is lube. If those have to be changed, then the, tur the, the PLC has to be tweaked to change them to something else. But if you're going to operate this turret, uh, the four bit logic turret, you've got to follow these inputs and outputs. You've got to wire your machine this way. Because when you copy those uh, PLC files over into the CNC12 uh, uh, 
lathe uh, directory, it's going to overwrite and that'll be it. And you can no longer use the wizard to uh, make changes. And the reason being is the wizard is a tool that actually writes the PLC to CNC 12. So if you were to set this all up and you got your turret running and then you went into the wizard and you tried to make a change and you saved it, you will basically overwrite your uh, turret PLC files. So uh, just, just a word at this point, uh, as of version 4.18, this is what you got to do if you want to use this particular turret. Um, it works well. The, the software is working. We bugged it out. It's, uh, it's, it's working very well. So uh, anyway, um, oh, also really quickly in that package, uh, we devised a spreadsheet that asks you uh, the question so you can set up your, they call them BCD values, to set up the truth tables. So that should help quite a bit. It's a little bit of math involved. This, this sheet is all of uh, four pages uh, at this point, um, but uh, it's, it's not terribly difficult to follow. And again, like I said, the prerequisite is you have to follow these inputs and outputs when you wire a machine. Um, I have two sensors. I have a home sensor for Z and I have a home sensor for X. And they are proximity switches. Uh, when I take you down to the cabinet, I'll show you um, what I ended up doing. I ended up using an opto isolated uh, two channel 24 volt uh, DC relay board. Dirt cheap. Got, them off of, got it off of Amazon. And basically what it's doing is the sensors are being fed to that board and then that board is opening and closing relays and the relays are wired in series to that home all input. That solves the problem of having two home switches uh, and their proximity sensors or whatever you might have. Another unique thing is I have a normally open sensor on the X and I have a normally closed sensor on the Z and the reason being is there's a bar here on the OR ax that goes over the sensor and, and keeps the sensor tripped when it's in operation but when it homes it backs off and then the uh, sensor will change state and uh, it, it works just fine. So anyway, I'm going to get you back to this uh, control cabinet and I'll go over the, uh, the components and then we'll uh, go into the uh, parameter setting and we'll, make, we'll follow these instructions and we'll set this lathe up, um, this particular lathe, to, for the parameters and then we'll copy the files over and then we'll see if we get this turret running. Alright, let's go down to the cabinet. Okay. Here's a control cabinet. I'll give you a brief overview of this particular one. Um, this is the VFD for the spindle motor. Um, this one happened to come from factorymation.com. It's one of their new uh, TD200 series VFDs, which is kind of cool. It has a port, and you can plug it into the PC, and you can program it that way as well as the keypad. It's not hard to program via the keypad, but you could actually save the personality setting out of that VFD to your PC. Um, this is a 48 volt power supply for the lead shine uh, closed loop hybrid steppers. Um, this is the 24 volts, 1.7 amps. This is uh, providing uh, logic power to Acorn and as well to the proximity sensors. This is an e-stop relay here. Uh, I make and break the uh, power, the DC power coming out of the 48 volt, volt power supply, both the positive and negative legs. Uh, on that contactor. That contactor is rated for DC use. Um, and then over here, this is the turret power supply. It's a um, two-channel power supply. It has 24 volts and 12 volts on it. It's strictly used for the uh, turret logic. The turret logic itself for the uh, optical sensors is 12 volts. The motor, as I said earlier, is 24 volts. And it also provides 12 volts uh, DC for the reversing of that turret motor. I'm going to bring you in a little bit more closely to this particular area so that we can go over the turret part of uh, this cabinet. Okay, here's that uh, two-channel uh, opto isolated relay board. What's interesting about those boards is they just take a, a signal. They're looking at the signal input. They're not, the signal itself is not driving the relay, okay? The board is, the relay is optically isolated from the input. So it doesn't matter 
um, as long as you've got a signal coming in, in this case they're, the, they're my proximity sensors, they're coming into that board and the board is monitoring the inputs. When it does see a state change, then it will use uh, a dedicated 24 volt feed. That's what's right here. Um, there's a 24 volt feed and a common just to power the board and it uses that voltage to energize and de-energize the coil of those relays. So I've got them, uh, the inputs are wired on this side and on the output side. Um, they, I'm using the normally open, normally closed contacts of the relay to put them in series and then I've got that input running to uh, uh, the input specified, uh, which I believe is input six. Okay. So that's the, uh, that takes care of homing switches. This board here is another optically isolated board. Um, it's a 12 volt DC board. So it's getting its power from this, from this uh, power supply up at the top. It's got dedicated 12 volts coming into it. Now on this one, you'll see this blue, white, and orange. These are the 12 volt signals from that turret. So as their states change, these relays change. You can see relay two is energized right now. And uh, then I'm, I've, got the, uh, I've got a common from Acorn jump, jumping to all the commons on these relays. And then you'll see I carried the, the uh, same, uh, I tried to carry the same uh, color scheme. I must not have had orange wire I'm using uh, uh, purple, so I'm using blue, white, and purple, and those are the outputs going to input one, two, and three on the acorn board. So as the turret changes, these relays, you'll hear them clicking, and they're changing states, and they're closing. So uh, again, I'm using the optically isolated input of this relay board. So it's just the signal that the board is looking at, but it uses the uh, 12 volts from this power supply to energize and de-energize the relays. Now over here, this is a, this is a relay, and this relay is a, uh, a double pole, double throw. In other words, it, there's, two, there's two poles and they wag back and forth. There's a normally open side and a normally closed side. Okay, That relay is being controlled by output two on Acorn. So output two is wired to this relay board. Um, you'll see right now there's no output uh, to energized yet. We haven't programmed the uh, PLC. We haven't set, set up the turret program yet. But you'll see that there's nothing energized. However, this relay in its normally closed state is providing 12 volts up to that turret right now. Um, because the turret is at rest, it's providing 12 volts to that turret motor. And that, that turret motor is, is uh, resting a turning that turret to rest against the pawl at the given tool position that it's in now. So when it does, when the uh, output two does close and wants to rotate that turret, it closes and it energizes this relay. So the normally open contact closes and feeds 24 volts up to that uh, uh, turret motor so it can ro roll forward. And then once the the signal or the logic is met, the truth table is met, uh, then ACORN will see that and it will release this output to, and this will, will go back to its normally closed state and it'll provide 12 volts to roll it backwards against the pawl. So that's essentially how this, this particular turret works. That's how I've got this particular uh, lathe wired up. So let's follow the the directions to program the parameters required and then we'll copy in the, the PLC files and then we'll test it to see how it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a report before I do any any changes to this machine. The machine is currently working without a turret uh, so if I need to fall back to something I can always go back to it by creating a report. And I always recommend that as you're going along you're working on a machine create reports so that if you mess something up and you need to go back, you can go back to the last report, start there and, and start again. But because we're making some major changes to this and we won't be able to use the wizard after we're done with this, any changes will have to be done within CNC 12. Um, it's not that you can't make changes, it's just they have to done, be done within CNC 12 and the parameters and, and uh, setup files and so forth. We'll kind of touch on that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get a report done on this machine.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start CNC 12 lathe. I'm going to try and do as much as I can to stay out of the picture. I'm going to cycle these stop, software exit, cycle these stop, reset to continue. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go down here to utility, create a report, and the folder is going to record, re, uh, create the report to as report backup. I press OK. Give it a little bit. Report's completed. All right. So now at this point, I'm going to use the uh, the instruction sheet to to uh, this is the overview, and then I'm going to go through uh, the installation and the parameters it says to change. So I'm going to escape back. I'm going to do F1. F3, 1, 3, 7, enter. We're going to go to F3 parameters. And the very first parameter it says to change for this particular one. For this particular, uh, it's acorn gray code with one motor output base tool turret. So this applies to this, this, uh, this particular application only, so remember that. So we go down to parameter 6. It says to change it to 1. Okay, and it says parameter 160. It says change that to 1. Parameter 161. Maximum number of tool positions. In this case, it's 8. So I'm going to put 8 in there. And then parameters 831 to 846, the BCD values. I know what they are. I've already calculated them. We start with 831. And that one is 7 for this machine. The next one is 3. Next one is 2. Next one is 0. 835 is 1. 836 is 5. 837 is 4. And 838 is 6. Okay. So then it says parameter 849, the amount of time in seconds to wait before faulting the tool change cycle. If the parameter is set to zero, it will default to 10 seconds. Okay, so the amount of time in seconds to wait before faulting the tool change cycle. That means if you call, if you call a tool change and it's taking too long, it's a kind of a drop dead number. So I've, in my case, it's 24 seconds. And how I came up with 24 seconds is the amount of time it takes for that turret to rotate one full revolution. Now let's say it's on tool one and I want to get to tool eight. So it's the time that I, and I checked it with a stopwatch, I set it at tool one and then I called tool eight, which is the worst case scenario. And how much time that it took to get to tool eight and I added a couple of seconds. So in my case, 849 is going to be 24 seconds. It's a slow turret. 849. 849 is 24 seconds. Okay, the next one. 851. Amount of time in seconds to go past the tool counter input before the turret reverses into the locked position. This is done so that turret reverses into correct tool location instead of the previous tool location. If parameter is set to zero, it will default to 0.75 seconds. And that, that's fine for me. Um, I used 0.7 on the other one. Since that's on my cheat sheet, I'm going to set it, set it to 0.7. So we go to 851, and we're going to set it to 0.7 seconds. These values, 849, this is in seconds, OK? Just keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to save this. It says parameter 160 requires a special PLC program to work correctly. Are you sure? F1, yes because we're going to park we're going to put that program in there now. So I'm going to escape that and I'm going to go ahead and shut down. I'm going to exit CNC 12. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder with the uh, PLC And I have it under turret files. Under this one happens to be 4.14 plus. So it's revisions greater than 4.14.
we recommend you use 4.18 and newer. All right, I've already got it unzipped. I'm going to open it. So the one we're looking for is 418 lathe turret gray code uh, one output. So now I'm going to highlight the installation instructions are in that file. That's what these are here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these files. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy. And then we're going to go over to CNCT. CNCT, we're going to open up the CNCT folder. And then we're going to right click. And we're going to paste. And yes, we want to replace the files in the destination folder. These are the PLC files. Now your machine settings are preserved. They're okay. What you set up before you did all this, they're going to be in there. Okay? So just so you know. Alright, so now uh, at this point I need to power down the control. Power down Acorn. Give it a second. I'm going to part back up. I'm going to wait for the uh, heartbeat light to come on. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start CNC 12 lathe. Okay, cycle my e-stop. And I'm going to go ahead and home the machine. Okay, there you see tool 2. And the turret is on tool 2, so it's reading the gray logic. At least we think it is. We haven't tested it yet. Um, let's go ahead and command a tool change. So we'll go to MDI, and we'll do a T0303, uh, and we're going to do a cycle start. Okay, a minute ago I was calling T tool 3. Go on here to MDI. And you see it's still sitting there, tool 3. And it didn't rotate, nothing happened. So I found a mistake that I had made. It's a very simple one, but I want to show it to you. I want you guys to see this. Um, so it wouldn't rotate, nothing would happen. And here's why. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to Alt-I, the diagnostic screen, and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what the problem really is, why it didn't rotate. I'm going to move the box. Output 2 is the output that the PLC calls to turn on to rotate that turret forward, okay? Uh, I'm going to move away from it. You'll see there's an underline underneath that LED, all right? And it's, uh, I highlight it, it says rotate tool turret. So you, when you move the arrow keys, you can see what the output is assigned to by just moving them. But here was my problem. And this, this underline come from me previously doing a control alt f That's how you force an output on. Okay? So when you do force an output on, you have to hit, when you hit control alt f to put it back, you have to do actually, you have to do it twice. So let me go back here. Let's do, we move the box over it. We do Control alt f Now I'm going to move away. Now output 2 is in its normal state. Now I'm going to go ahead and force the output on. I'm going to do Control alt f And if you hear, the turret is running because I've turned on output 2. Now you can see the turret is turning. All right. So now, in order to stop that, we need to turn that, that output off again. We need to turn off the output, so Control alt f Okay, so I, I stopped it. The turret is rotating backwards and it's going against, locking against the pawl, as it did. But when I move away, you see that underline? I basically disabled the output. So you have to hit it again, Control alt f again, to clear that. Okay? So now we're good to go. So I'm going to do Alt-I, get out of the diagnostic screen. I'm going to zoom you back. And now we'll go ahead and do an MDI. Right now it's at tool number two. Let's go ahead and up arrow to bring tool three up. And we'll do a cycle start. I can do Alt-S on the keyboard, or I can just press the cycle start button. 
The click you heard was the paw. The, the tool position went past that paw. That's where you hear the click. And then it backed up. So uh, let's do tool four, T0404. Alt S. Now again, the, the 0.7 seconds that we put in there was once the truth table is met, it delays seven seconds, so it goes a little bit further, and then that 0.7 second timer times out, and then output two turns off and it comes back against the pole. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to move the camera around so you can actually see this turret operate. Okay, I'm going to call a. I'm still in MDI. I'm going to do a T0505. I don't know if you can see it. There's tool four right there. Okay, that's tool four. Tool five is down here. So I'm going to do a cycle start. It overshoots and then it comes back. And it's overshooting. In other words, the truth table is met. It's, it, it's telling the control that, hey, I'm at tool five, but the control is allowing that seven tenths of a second more to go a little further. The seven tenths of a second times out, and then the relay output two opens again, and then the other relay is applying 12 volts to the motor and it's backing up against uh, tool five. Now let's go to tool four. Um, uh, which, which means it's going to have to come all the way around. That's the worst case scenario. So let's do tool four again. There's seven, eight, one, two, three, four and there it landed on tool four. That, again, that's the 22, I think it was, I used 24 seconds, that's parameter 849, is you time the amount of time it takes to get from this tool to this tool. It's unidirectional, all right? So that's, uh, that's parameter 849, again, per parameter 851 is the time in seconds that it actually overshoots after seeing, uh, it does it, it, well, it's not called overshoot, it continues past that, tur that tool and uh, in my case, it's seven tenths of a second. It goes back, goes seven tenths, and then after the seven tenths has timed out, then the output turns off, and then it, the 12 volts rolls it back. And this this thing is barely warm. The motor is barely warm. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this brief little video on seeing a lathe turret operating under Centroid CNC Acorn Control uh, version 4.18 software using the special. Uh, PLC uh, written for this particular turret which is Acorn Gray Code with one motor output base tool turret. Okay, it uses up to four uh, uh, status bits from the turret. Um, so it, it, it works great. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.